Hello friends, welcome back to the channel. If you're still dreaming of summer holidays now that autumn is upon us, well here in England anyway, I have the perfect tutorial for you. We're going to create this simple sunset scene using just the preset shapes which are available in Adobe Illustrator and I'm also going to show you how you can use gradients and some of the really fun warping effects you can apply to add finishing touches to your picture. So I've opened a new file and the first thing we're going to do is create the sea and the sky using just one rectangle to fill the artboard. If you're new to Illustrator and artboards are a bit confusing let me know and I'll add that to my list of tutorials for the future. Before I draw my rectangle I'm going to choose a gradient for my fill colour by clicking the drop down menu in the swatches panel and choosing gradients. The last option, which is called Water with Horizon 5, is perfect for this project as it has a ready-made horizon. Now you can see that the preset direction for the gradient is at the wrong angle. It looks like we're looking at the sea after tripping over some driftwood. This is easy to fix. In the gradients panel there's an option to rotate it and I'm going to flip the whole thing around 90 degrees. This next bit is a little bit complicated but stick with me and hopefully it will all become clear. Back in our shapes toolbox I'm going to select a polygon. I'm going to click once and the option will come up to change the number of sides. We're going to select three sides and create a triangle. Now using the transform tool I'm going to stretch out and rotate my triangle so it's long and thin and position it here on the horizon. Don't worry too much about the size and the position at the moment, we can sort all that out later. So there we have our first sun ray. Now I'm going to select the rotate tool and holding down both my shift and option key at the same time, I'm going to click as close as I can to that central point of the triangle that we just drew. Now we have an options pop up. So the plan is to fill a semicircle with sun rays and I'm going to rotate that first ray that we just drew at about 15 degrees. I'm changing the angle to 15 and then I'm going to click the copy button and there we have our second ray. Now for the fun bit. Command D on the keyboard in Illustrator will duplicate the last action that you performed so in a matter of milliseconds I can create the whole of the sun rays. One thing I didn't mention yet is that to prevent moving the underlying gradient rectangle while I'm creating more objects on top I selected it and clicked Object Lock Selection. I do this as I go along with anything I'm not currently working on to prevent inadvertently moving it. So I've selected all the sun rays and I'm resizing them and I'm moving them to the middle of my horizon. I've also grouped them which will help when we add our gradient later. The gradient I'm applying to the sun rays is in the Fades menu. I've chosen Fade to White 1. Once again I need to rotate it by 90 degrees, but once I did the rotation I saw that the gradient was fading in the wrong direction. So here's another way to alter a gradient. You can use the gradient slider here on the right. I can drag the white swatch to the opposite end of the slider and do the same with the transparent swatch and it's fading in a different direction. I'm going to take the transparency down a little bit and now we're done with that bit I'll lock it and we'll move on. And now I'm going to draw the sun. Using the ellipse tool, draw a circle and fill it with the gold dust gradient which is in the default swatches menu. To make it a semicircle, using the direct selection tool, click on the single anchor point at the bottom of the circle and delete it. Okay, next is the reflection. Still using the gold dust gradient, draw an oval where you want your reflection to be on the sea. And now we're going to go into the warp tools where there are an array of pretty unpleasant sounding effects like bloat, pucker and wrinkle which is the one that we're going to use on the reflection. Like the blob brush in the previous video all these tools have various settings. It's a good idea to play around with them so you get used to how they work. I'll put an image up on the screen of the settings I used here. And all I'm going to do is, with my oval selected, drag the wrinkle brush back and forth until I get my desired effect. Make it a little bit transparent and voila, you have a sunset reflection. 
Now the next step is to create the beach. I've squashed the reflection a bit using the transform tool and I'm drawing two rectangles, one underneath in white and one on top in a sandy colour that's positioned just slightly further down. Now back where we found the wrinkle tool there's one called warp. So with both rectangles selected I'm going to gently create a curved edge to look like waves. It's no problem if things go over the edge of the artboard, they won't show when you save it. Okay, so now I'm going to show you how to select a colour from an existing gradient. You can see that the horizon gradient we chose earlier is in our swatch menu. Click on this and then go to the gradient panel. You can see on the slider all the individual colours that make up the gradients. If you double click on one of the swatches, I'm choosing the darker blue one here, up comes all the information about that colour. So I can now copy the hex value and paste it into my fill colour. This helps us to avoid using too many colours and making things look messy. So now going back to my ellipse tool, I'm going to create a ripply effect on the water by covering the sea with small oval shapes. Once we're happy with that, it's time to go back to the wrinkle tool and give them a little bit of movement. We're almost done now, I just want to add a few wispy clouds. I'm doing that by making ovals and still using the wrinkle tool, but I've turned the brush to 90 degrees in the settings and I'm just tapping lightly on the selected oval to give it a bit of a wrinkle. The final touch is to make the beach look a bit more beachy by adding a texture effect. I'm doing this by selecting the sand colour and going to Effect, Texture, Grain. You can see that this effect is in a group called Photoshop Effects, so bear in mind that if you apply one of these, they are raster effects and not vectors. I think that's a topic for another lesson, but I just wanted to highlight it. And there we have it, a simple beach scene that should be easily achievable even if you're a complete beginner. If you have any questions, please leave me a comment and I'll do my best to answer. If not, just grab a beer and a beach towel and have a well-deserved relax. Hope to see you back here soon. Bye-bye.